So, in this, the final lecture for Unit 1, we're going to look at the relationship between kinetics, the rate equation, and the reaction mechanism. So, by the end of this lecture, we should be able to explain what is meant by the term rate determining step. We should also be able to use the rate equation to predict which reactants take part in the rate determining step. Now, many chemical reactions have several steps in their mechanism. The whole reaction doesn't happen one big bang, as it were. And the speed, the rate of the reaction, will depend on the rate determining step. So only one of those steps is the one that determines the speed of the reaction. It's a bit like those cross-country races where the winning team is the team that is the first one to get four runners across the finishing line. So how well the team performs doesn't depend on how fast the fast people are, but it it's, uh, depends on how fast the slowest person is. So it's a bit like chemical reactions. The speed of the reaction is controlled by the speed of the slowest step. So let's take an example of say, two molecules of X react with two molecules of Y to produce Z. Okay. So possibly what could happen for this reaction is that in the first step, two molecules of X react with one molecule of Y to produce an intermediate. And in the second step, the intermediate reacts with the second molecule of Y to produce Z. So there's two steps in this mechanism. This one and this one. Let's just say that this is the slow step and this step is the faster step. Okay, well, the rate of reaction will depend on this step. So this is called the rate, it's called the rate determining step. Okay, the rate determining step is the slow step in the mechanism. And when you work out a rate equation, the rate equation is telling you what's going on in the slow step. So that's the one that determines the rate of the reaction. So for this made up example, the rate equation would be rate equals k x squared y. So it tells you what molecules are involved in the rate determining step, what molecules are involved in the slow step. So it tells us that there's two molecules of x and one molecule of y involved in the slow step. And because all the molecules that appear in the balanced equation don't appear here, it tells us that there must be at least more than one step. It doesn't tell us if there's two steps or three or four or five, but it tells us there's more of more than one step in this reaction mechanism. Let's look at another example. So two molecules of nitrogen dioxide reacting with fluorine to produce two molecules of NO2F. So let's say we carried out some experiments to determine the rate equation. And we work out the rate equation is KNO2F2. Okay. So that tells us two things. It tells us in the slowest step, in the rate determining step, one molecule of NO2 reacts with one molecule of F2. So it also tells us there must be more than one step in the mechanism. So the rate determining step involves one molecule of NO2 and one molecule of F2 and there must be more than one step. So possibly what could happen is one molecule of NO2 reacts with one molecule of F2 to produce an intermediate, which we'll call X, and that's the slow rate determining step, and it tells, determines this rate equation. And then there must be more steps. Let's just say second step. The intermediate X will then react to this other molecule of NO2, which hasn't appeared in the rate equation. So X reacts with the second molecule of NO2 to produce our products. 
and compared to the first step, this step is fast. Okay, so be clear that the rate of reaction will depend on the slow step. And so it's the species that are involved in that slow step which appear in the rate equation. And that's why it's possible for a reactant not to appear in the rate equation. It only takes part in the fast part of the mechanism, which has no effect on the rate of the reaction. So here's a past paper question. It says, for the reaction 2A plus 2B goes to C, the rate equation is A, B squared. Which of the following could be a possible mechanism for this reaction? So we look at that rate equation and it tells us, this is telling us something about the slow step. It's telling us in the slow step, one molecule of A reacts with two molecules of B. So A, the slow step, just one molecule of A and one molecule of B and X, so that's not right. B, let's look at the slow step, one molecule of A and two molecules of B. So yeah, that one's right. C's got two molecules of A, that would be A squared. And D's also got two molecules of A, which would have given us A squared in the rate equation. So it must be B. Okay, so that's really as finished all the notes for unit one. So we'll just run over the learning outcomes for this last lecture. And then it's about preparing for the assessments. So by now you should be able to explain what is meant by the term rate determining step and you should be able to use the rate equation to predict which reactants take part in the rate determining step.